Hey, listen up. First two rows are going to be for visitors. Everybody in the back, sorry, you got to move up. Start moving up. Let's go. Stand up if you're in the back over there. Stand up and start moving forward. Move up. <clears throat> First two rows are for visitors. Right, are we good, two rows? First two rows are for visitors. Everyone else, move up. Move up and fill in the seats.
All right, listen up. This is your two-minute warning. Be in your seats. Write book bags in the back. We're going to begin in about a minute or two, okay? So make sure that you're paying attention. This is a special ceremony. Book bags in the back, right? Book bags in the back. No phones. We will begin in one minute or so. Good, Adam? All right, let's go ahead and come, uh, come to order here and let's be quiet, okay? Teachers, teachers, if you could help us out, okay? All right, let's be quiet. Listen up. No more talking. Teachers, if you could walk around and help us out, that'd be great. All right, special ceremony this morning, and I want to introduce our pastor, Pastor Ray Cruz, if you'll come and... Open, us, open the ceremony and word of prayer. Good morning, everyone, to our students, our faculty, our staff, and honored guests today, uh, church members, those of you that are first responders at, and are here, we are honored by your presence. And I want to say that today, this is a very solemn occasion for us a very, very important service uh, for all of the students. Um, uh, please be very, very respectful. Um, this is an extremely important occasion to us. Um, and our purpose here today is threefold. Number one, it is to honor those who um, fell on September 11th 
2001, um, the civilians, the first responders, the police officers, firemen, um, the, uh, those who were on the planes, uh, everyone who fell on that day, to honor them by vowing to never forget, by vowing to always remember. For the student body that is among us today, uh, none of you were born before that day. And it is up to us who were around at that time to teach you so that you carry on with your children and grandchildren this vow never to forget. And one of the things that we pledge to never forget is that freedom is not free. Uh, we often forget that. But there is always a price for freedom, including the most important freedom of all, spiritual freedom from sin and its consequences, eternal death. There was a price paid for that, the blood of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. So our, our first purpose here today is to uh, pledge to those who survived and honor those who passed away, pledge to never, never forget. Uh, number two, uh, we want to honor today the first responders all over the world, uh, men and women who run towards the sound of danger. Uh, when others run away because there's panic, there's screaming, there's death and injury, uh, there are men and women among us, there are men and women in our society, there are men and women all over the world that run towards the sound of danger and calamity. And so we want to thank them and honor them today. And uh, number three, we, and most important, we want to honor God because uh, the theme verse for today's service is no greater love has a man than this, that he should lay down his life for a friend. And our Lord Jesus Christ lived out those words in the most uh, profound way. And not only did he die for friends, he died for everyone. While we were yet sinners and not his friends, he died for us. So today, of course, as we remember those who fell, as we honor those who are serving currently, we want to more than anything else lift up the Lord Jesus Christ who makes all things possible. Amen. Let's pray. Our Father in heaven, we thank you for this occasion. It is profoundly solemn to us. We remember, Lord, the day that this country was attacked. We remember the grave injury and even the tragic deaths of so many on September 11, 2001. Father, we thank you for their lives and the happiness that they brought to their families while they were alive. And we thank you for the first responders and the military personnel at the Pentagon, the first responders who went up the Twin Towers in order to save as many people as they could. We thank you for their sacrifice and for the fact that while they perished, they saved hundreds and hundreds from the same fate. Father, we want to thank you for those that are currently serving in whatever capacity, whatever uniform they use. We thank you for those in the military who uh, stand on guard protecting our freedom. They, they stand on the wall to make sure that we can sleep under the blanket of freedom and protection. We thank you, Father, for the police officers who, on a daily basis, uh, risk their lives to be the thin line between us and chaos, us and uh, complete corruption in our society. We pray a blessing over their lives and that you would protect them. We thank you, Father, for the firemen and firewomen in our society who um, run towards the sound of calamity. When everyone else stands back, they rush in. And we thank you for them, Father. 
And we pray a, a, a prayer of blessing and protection over their lives. Father, we thank you for doctors and nurses and medical personnel, everyone from a physical therapist to um, lung um, technicians. Uh, we thank you that currently they are putting their lives at risk dealing with this COVID crisis in our nation. Uh, we pray you protect them, watch over them, and provide blessings for them and their family. And Father, we honor you, the giver of all life. We honor you because you loved us so much, you sent your one and only son so that he would die so that we may live forever. And we um, thank you for his sacrifice. We dedicate this service to you. We pray that you would anoint it with your spirit, that you would bless everyone here um, who is listening to your word, who is listening to um, what is said as testimony. I pray that you would encourage every listener and that your spirit would move and stir every heart and every mind to a place where first, Jesus is their savior, and secondly, Jesus is their Lord. And we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. And if we would all please stand for the presentation of the color guard. Our honor guard today is representatives of the Hialeah Fire Department. Let's give them a big hand. And please remain standing for our national anthem and our Pledge of Allegiance, uh, first the Pledge of Allegiance. If everyone would place their hand over their heart and please repeat after me, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And now the um, national anthem.
Please be seated. Our special speaker today is a gentleman who has been a pastor for many years. He is also currently serving as a major, as a chaplain in the United States Army Reserves. And of course, he is the uh, chaplain of Dade Christian School. He's your chaplain. And as such, he ministers to you every day. It is my great honor to present Pastor Major Cecil Casadan. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor, for that. We're going to begin by showing one video, right? We're going to show this first video. It's only going to be uh, three or four minutes, and then I have a few words to say. We have unconfirmed reports this morning that a plane has crashed into one of the towers of the World Trade Center. There's a huge pall of smoke coming from that direction. If you were alive back then, right, our promise was to never forget. So we're trying to show you what this great tragedy was. But out of that great tragedy, so many good things came from it. I want to give you a little timeline as we pause here today and across the country and the world to remember those thousands lost on this day 20 years ago. At exactly 8.46, flight, there was four airplanes that crashed. At 8.46, Flight 11 crashes into the North Tower of the World Trade Center. At 9.02, Flight 175 crashes into the south face of the South Tower of the World Trade Center, which you saw. At 9.37, Flight 77 crashes into the side of the Pentagon, which you also saw. At 9.59, the South Tower of the World Trade Center collapses, killing hundreds. At 10.03, Flight 93 was commandeered by the passengers in the back. And in those brave acts, they decided that they would not allow that airplane to be used as a weapon against our country. And those passengers commandeered that airplane, and it crashed. 
Flight 93 crashed 80 miles southeast of Pittsburgh. At 1028, the North Tower of the World Trade Center collapses. At 1050, five stories of the part of the Pentagon collapses as well. At 520 in the afternoon, a 47-story building also collapses, killing several. After all was said and done, a total of 2,996 Americans, mostly, were killed in the attacks of 9-11. In that number, there were 19 terrorists, like I said, that commandeered four different airplanes. <clears throat> in total, 343 firefighters died as they were mostly rescuing, running up the buildings while everyone else was running away. 23 police officers, 37 Port Authority police officers also perished. Along with that, other paramedics. In the Pentagon, there was 189 people that were killed. What a tragic day that was. And so we remember, we promised that we would always remember the day that changed America. If you were there, you remember that day. You remember where you were when it happened. I was watching it live. I saw the second airplane crash into the building live. And it was because of 9-11, it was one of the main reasons why I decided that I wanted to do my part and serve my country. I wanted to be able to support the troops who were going to be going into battle, and I did. I deployed with them in 2012 and 2013 into Afghanistan. We took injuries. We took casualties. All for the price of freedom. This is what we call a memorial. What is a memorial? A memorial is a reminder of what has happened in the past. It gives testimony of a struggle or a great victory. It serves to guide our steps, never to make the same mistakes again. It is a constant reminder of the great sacrifices of so many. Many times we make memorials to honor great people or great causes or great triumphs. But we are here to remember our countrymen who were killed by ruthless acts of terror done by evil monsters. We, heard, we are here to remember their sacrifices, their bravery, their courage to honor their lives as the pastor said. This moment should always be remembered by all Americans as one of the darkest moments in our history, one in which a, a everyday American overcame evil with good. We would not let evil triumph. The memorial of 9-11 should always be commemorated as a time to reflect on what was lost. Honor the servants who laid their lives down and the ones who do every single day the ones that do this to secure our national freedoms and to remember how valuable and costly our freedoms really are. You are here in a free country, but it was not free. It's paid by the price of first responders, of our servicemen and women. It is not free that you are here in the land of freedom. May we never take these things for granted. Let's remember the brave souls who climbed into danger. I still think about the stories of the firemen climbing up fully geared. How many pounds we're talking about? 100 pounds? 100 pounds of gear running up 60, 70, 80 stories to bring. And by the way, this was the greatest tragedy. But considering there was maybe 30 to 40,000 people in Twin Towers, it is the greatest rescue as well that our country has ever seen because of the brave, brave men and women who decided that their life was not important enough that they were willing to sacrifice it to save other people who needed the help. So let's never take these things for granted. Let's remember the brave souls who climbed into danger and lost their lives trying to rescue people. Remember those helpless and unable to escape death's grip. So many lives lost. 
innocent people just going to work that day. Never to go home again. Remember the families of those left behind. So many, thousands and thousands of our countrymen lost their loved ones that day. And let's remember those who went to war to execute justice on those who were responsible for this tragedy. All in all, between the wars of Afghanistan and Iraq, 7,000 plus service members lost their lives. 8,000 contractors lost their lives. They paid the price so that you could sit here under the flag of freedom. Over 51,000 troops have been injured since the war began. We have paid a terrible price, but we should honor those who are willing to make that sacrifice so that you could live in a free America and enjoy the benefits of all that we have. You see why this day is so important? President Bush said this, one of the worst days in America's history saw some of the bravest acts in Americans' history. We'll always honor the heroes of 9-11, and here at this hallowed place, we pledge that we will never forget their sacrifice. May you never forget what it cost to live in the land of the free because of the brave. In the scriptures, and I'll close here in just a minute, there is also a memorial in the book of Joshua chapter 4. As the children of Israel walked across the Jordan, they were bringing the ark across dry ground. And the Lord told the nation of Israel, take 12 stones out of the Jordan and place them as a memorial. 12 stones so that they would remember what God did. It says in verse 20, And those 12 stones which they took out of the Jordan, Joshua set up at Gilgal. And this is what he said to the people, to the nation of Israel. When your children ask their fathers in times to come, what do these stones mean? So that's you. Why do we do this memorial? Joshua was also teaching the, the young people, when your children ask, what does this all mean? He says, then you shall let your children know Israel passed over this Jordan on dry ground. For the Lord your God dried up the waters of the Jordan for you until you passed over. And as the Lord your God did to the Red Sea, which he dried up for, for us until we passed over, so that all the people of the earth may know that the hand of the Lord is mighty, that you may fear the Lord your God forever. What's the lesson and the challenge for us? God wanted the nation of Israel to remember in that memorial, and what I want us to remember in this memorial as well, is to remember that you can have a relationship, and hopefully do have a relationship, with a loving God. A God who is willing to perform miracles if necessary to help you and to take care of you. So as we remember this day, let us also remember that we have a God who sees from heaven. And he wants to be in a loving relationship with each one of us. But also, God wanted them to remember his mighty power. And there's so many miracles that we could talk about on that day. But we should all acknowledge that God is all-powerful. And in those times of need, God is able to take care of us. He's able to help us. He's able to encourage us. He's able to do everything that is necessary for us to succeed in life. But we honor not just the sacrifices, but we should also honor God on this day to remember his loving care, to remember his mighty power. And God also wanted them to remember the special relationship that he has with his people. It says that they would live, that they, that they might know God in fear forever.
God wants all of us to know. That in the middle of tragedy, in the middle of chaos, there are always going to be brave men and women that are willing to step up and do what is necessary. Some of you may be called to serve your country in such a way. But whether you are or aren't called to serve your country in that way, all of us are Americans. And we have a responsibility as Americans to never take for granted the freedoms that were given to us, but that we would do our part. See, one day, your generation, you're going to be in charge. You're going to be the leaders. And hopefully you will appreciate the sacrifices of so many to understand that this land that you live under, the blessings that you take every single day. Remember in chapel a couple of weeks ago, I told you that there are literally kids right now, especially females in a country called Afghanistan, they will most likely get executed for going to school. If they are found reading books, they will be stoned to death. Females, if they're taught anything about education, any man can take them and execute them. So we do have a lot to be thankful for, don't we? So we give you the charge to never forget, to always remember these sacrifices, to know that it costs something to live under what we call the land of the free. And hopefully you will be able to step up. And when it's your time to lead, may you keep the banner of freedom flowing at all times. For your sake, for your children's sake, and for the next generation to follow. We should remember this day and never forget their sacrifices. And always be mindful and to never forget what God has empowered us with as well. I just want to pray with you, and then we're going to show another video, okay? And then Pastor Ralph, unfortunately, is not going to sing, so we're going to go to the next one after that. Right, Brother Ralph? Okay. All right, so let's pray, and then we're going to show another video. Lord, I pray that you would help us, that you would certainly empower us, that we would know what these memorials mean, not just to remember these brave sacrifices, but to also remember how mighty you are, how loving you are, and how you want a relationship with us. Lord, we acknowledge that our freedoms do not come from man, that our freedoms do not come from our government, but that all of our freedoms ultimately come from you. We are so thankful that you have blessed our country beyond measure, that you've given us so many things to rejoice and to be blessed. Lord, help us to never take that for granted and help us to never take you for granted either. And may you empower us now that we would step forth when the time comes to be able to do our part for the sake of this country, for our families, for our cities, for our communities. Lord, that you would bless us now and keep us safe. In your name we pray. Amen. when it first happened, the minutes felt like hours, the hours felt like days, and the horror of what happened, one detail after another, could hardly be processed, much less understood. Then days turned into weeks, and weeks turned into years. Memorials were built, wars were fought, and victims' names were read. Survivors tried to pick up the pieces over and over again. But no matter how much time has passed, we vow to hold these memories. We will never forget those who were taken from us. The world changes and shifts this way and that. But one thing stays constant. One thing is steady. God, God weeps with us. God mourns with us. God bottles up our tears and records them in his book. He is closer to you than your own breath and remains the cornerstone of life. 
God is the solid ground holding us up as the world moves beneath us. It's as true today as it was on that day. Our God reigns. He reigns over principalities and powers. His dominion stretches beyond what our eyes can see. And when the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy, our God reigns, and we will always remember. Okay. Oh, that's on. Good morning, everybody. We're going to take a time now to honor those among us who have either first responders or military foundation in their lives. And I'm going to call them out by name. And if you will come forward, we're going to make a presentation of a medallion for you to have in remembrance and of today. First is Carlos Perez. <laughs> Take your time, Carlos. Carlos is an Army veteran. Next is Carell Rosario. Carlos is in the Army. He is a veteran. Rosario, Mr. Rosario, Carlos is a Miami-Dade Fire Department retired. Next person is Gary Kosak. Gary is a veteran of the USAF, used to fly fighters. <laughs> Pastor Ralph Rodriguez. <laughs> Ralph is a veteran of the Navy, also a retired lieutenant from the Miami Springs Police Department. By the way, he's the guy that organized all this for today. Jay Smith. Jay is a veteran of the United States Air Force. Mr. Charles Stevenson. One of our fine teachers here at Dade Christian School. He is a veteran of the U.S. Navy. Derek Rodriguez, who is our presenter. He is the son of Ralph and Rita Rodriguez. He is a former student of Dade Christian School. We have, uh, oh, this other guy here I know him pretty good. 
Terry Kushai, that's me. <laughs> U.S. United States Air Force. Now I'm going to, I have a couple more names here. If there's anyone here who I didn't get to talk to before so I could get their name, where's the color guard? Hey guys, I don't have all your names. I need you to come on up here. I talked to you several times today and didn't get any names. Lieutenant Carlos Castellanos. Engineer James Brown. <laughs> Lieutenant Jack Gazzola. That's my tech, Michael Smith. All right, thank you so much. You know, I, uh, years ago when I first moved to Hialeah in 1966, I had four Hialeah firemen as neighbors. And what impacted me the most, we were in a group that uh, responded when there was a four alarm fire. We went out there to give them coffee and donuts and so on. <laughs> I look up on the ladder and up on the ladder was my next door neighbor with the snorkel in a warehouse fire over there. So, that, you know, I realized, oh, yes, where, how did I miss that one? Michael. Michael Cornwell. And you? Come up here. I don't know, she's got a whistle, so we got to watch out. Candy Cornwell, Coast Guard. Okay, and Cecil, Major Cecil Casadani, who was our speaker. A, also a graduate of Dade Christian School. <laughs> you, there you go. How small the world is. Okay, let's see. I, I think I, oh, and there's two other names that I wanted to read out here. One is Scott Kushai, who is not here today because he's on duty as a police officer. He's a detective at the Pembroke Pines Police, also a graduate of Dade Christian School. And Anthony, okay. Yeah. Also, Pastor Anthony DiStefano, a former detective who is out because of COVID. So he was supposed to be here today in presenting. Do we have anyone else? Steve, are you a veteran or a firefighter? All right. Steve, come on down. You can run, but you cannot hide. Anybody else? All right, if I can get Steve, get up there with the, with the crew. Ralph, can you make it up? Can you make it up? Okay. I'll Photoshop you in later, okay? All right. Oh, I think I should get up there, too.
Thank you. While they're coming down, I just wanted to throw a per Hey, I got the microphone. <laughs> I just wanted to say something to the students from my side, okay? I just had my 80th birthday in April, and I'm thinking back. I'm thinking back to when I was a parent of three students here, thinking back, and, and, it, and it dawned on me, we're never forgetting 9-11, okay? I was born in April 1941, which was before Pearl Harbor. So when we look at all these things, things that your parents didn't even experience, I didn't even experience, are all things that have impacted this country that has affected, there was over two million soldiers who were over fighting during the Second World War. So we look at all these things, we need to be reminding ourselves every day. We want to remind you, you have the shirt, every time you put the shirt on, think about that. It's, it's so important for us to remember. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for your service. And on this, on this solemn occasion to address the student body with a message is our headmaster, Sherard, Dr. Sherard Burns. message. I just want to briefly say a couple of things. Um, like many of you, I remember where I was on that day, and I, I lived in a place where the airplanes flew over my house. We lived in Orlando at the time. And the day that that happened, I don't know how long it, it was, but for several days, there were no airplanes in the sky. And it was the, it was the eeriest feeling when you're used to hearing them. But I remember the fear that really everybody felt. Was a plane going to fall here? You just didn't know. But then there was this we more weird sense that our commander in chief, he was in his bunker as he should be, but it was odd because we felt, I felt, sort of like we didn't know what was going on. And I remember when he, and he emerged, President Bush, and he gave the, the address to the nation. I, I, I think at that time, I can say, I, I don't know that I've ever felt more proud to be an American, right? So, and, and, and what's interesting is that George W. Bush is my, my favorite president, so don't knock my man. I love him. <laughs> but, but as an African American, I, I know that our history is a sordid history. I, I have grandparents that had grandparents who were slaves and sharecroppers. You know, my parents lived through segregation, you know, segregated water fountains. And the one thing that I've always said is that none of us in this room, all of us, none of us, ever want to be defined by our past, right? And, and I, I think there's a sense in which the country, if we personified it, that is made it a person, we can look at it with a bad history. You students don't want to be defined the way you were last week or even last year. You want a different chance, you want a, you want a do-over. 
right? You want to you wanna prove that you can be the kind of child that your parents created and want you to be, the kind of student that we want you to be. You, you want to prove that, and we want you to prove that. We want you to be that, and we give you space to be that. And there is a sense in which we have to give space for our country. And so in that day, I'd read a book, and the book was on honor. It was just a book on honor. And I realized that other countries deal in an honor system in ways that we don't in our own country where in honor cultures, your name means something. And so when you go out and about, you represent your name. So I'm a Burns, and I represent Glenn and Mary Burns well to the best of my ability because I know my name means something. And in that day, there was a sense in which honor, dignity, and value as an American changed. And what does that mean for you as students? Well, it means everything that I just said, but it also means this. These men and women who serve us day in and day out, not simply for a paycheck because they love their job and they love this country, they make mistakes. They're humans. But their position dictates dignity, value, in 1 Peter, Peter says to a group of people who were struggling, suffering, this phrase, which is really weird, Peter says, honor the emperor. And the reason that's weird is because the emperor was Nero. And Nero was charged with slaughtering Christians, putting their hands in stakes and pulling them apart until their limbs tore off. Peter said, <laughs> honor the emperor. Here's what Peter meant, and here's how I want you to view men and women in military and law enforcement. You honor the position even if the people in the position are less than worthy of honor. So when you see brutality happen, don't dishonor the badge. Yes, the person may, have not have been a, may not have been a good person, but the position is worthy of honor. And I think if we begin to honor those who are worthy of it, you know, those who go in day in, day out and do their jobs well for the good of our communities and our country, then I think relationships between law enforcement and communities will grow in a better, stronger way. But it doesn't start with them. Every day they risk their lives for our safety. It starts with us to honor those who every day risk their lives for our safety. And there's always bad apples in a bunch. There's a sum of bad apples out here. I'm looking at a few of you. <laughs> but we're gonna honor you because you're in the image of God. That's your position. So my challenge to the students, we can start with law enforcement, obviously our government and our country, let's honor those who serve us. And then we can trickle it down even to this government we call DCS. Let's honor the government of this school, the laws and abide by the laws. And I guarantee you, if you're in trouble, it's because you broke a law not because people are walking around trying to get you in trouble, right? Well, I might be, but most of the teachers aren't. But that's true with law enforcement. They're not walking around trying to create problems, but they find them. And for our sake, we should be thankful that they're finding them. Amen? God bless you. Thank you for your service. September 11, 2001 was a Tuesday, and here in South Florida, like in New York, like in Washington, it was uh, what baseball players call a sky-high game, meaning there wasn't a single cloud in the sky. 
Uh, I know that because that morning, uh, I had just come home from running, jogging at the park across the street from where I lived. Uh, I was a 33-year-old young father of three with a um, two-year-old baby. And um, I walked into my apartment, turned on the TV to CBS Morning News, and they were just going through their, you know, normal routine. I went to um, the refrigerator to grab um, a Gatorade. Yes, Gatorade existed 20 years ago. <laughs> um, and um, as I was reaching for the Gatorade, I mean, this moment is frozen in, in time for me. I overhear, we interrupt this program to bring you this special report. And the national uh, reporters of CBS took over. And uh, they reported that apparently there was a small airplane, a Cessna type airplane that had crashed into the World Trade Center. And I immediately started to watch the TV and, you know, I, I would say 15, 20 minutes later, uh, live, the second plane was shown live as it crashed into the, um, the North Tower, I think was the second plane. And um, as I saw it there in person live, everyone that did was just in utter shock. Because that moment you understood um, this nation is being attacked. And um, an hour and a half later when the first tower fell, um, I'm not sure if I got the timing correct there, but when the first tower fell, I, I wept openly because I knew um, that thousands, I feared tens of thousands of people had died. Um, and, um, you know, I was so angered that um, before the second tower fell, I had uh, called uh, the Marine Corps recruiting office. I wanted to sign up um, because I knew that what was going to follow. Um, they were busy. I never got through to them. And I never, I never actually signed up. My uh, relatives, especially my wife, talked some sense into me after it. I was a full-time pastor at the time. Um, but um, that's how angry I was. And I think all of us felt that way at that moment. And that evening, uh, we held a service at church, uh, attended by about 500 people, most of which had never attended our church before. And uh, that event did galvanize America to be united, to focus on this foe and destroying this foe. And we did, we have. Um, since then, other people have supplanted them, and it's a battle that's continuing to be fought. But the original group that planned, schemed, and um, executed uh, the 9-11 attacks, they were all wiped off the face of the earth uh, by the U.S. military. And sometimes it took many years, but one by one we got them all, and we thank God for that. Um, but uh, I cannot end this uh, service without saying the following. Um, we here at New Testament Baptist Church uh, and Dade Christian School is a ministry of uh, New Testament Baptist Church. So NTBC and Dade Christian School and the Master's Academy, we stand for freedom. We stand for uh, individual rights. We stand for liberty. These are all concepts that come from the Bible. And our founding fathers of this country, they believed and they put it in writing 
that these rights descend not from any government or man, as has been stated, but it comes directly from God. You're free because God made you to be free. That's, that's the way he designed you. But we cannot be truly free unless we have freedom from our greatest enemy and the, the biggest terrorist of all. And it's not Satan. It's sin in our lives. And we're all sinners. That's what scripture says. The Bible says that I am a sinner. Your teachers are sinners. Your administrators are sinners. Um, the police officers, the firemen that are here today, the military personnel that's here today, they're sinners. And yes, you're a sinner. And the Bible says that Jesus died specifically taking your sin to the cross to forgive them. And the Bible says that on the third day he arose specifically to give you the life that he now has, eternal life. And so Jesus said, I am the life and the resurrection. He who believes in me, though he is dead, shall live forever. And so there is a life after this one. And if you trust in Christ as your Savior, the Bible says that to be absent from this body is to be present with the Lord. And um, Jesus lived out the verse that is our, our slogan today. He, um, he gave his life for you and for me so that we can have eternal life. And it's very important that the adults here the young people here, we all understand uh, this message. The best life, the, uh, the truest life that can be lived is life in Christ Jesus. And let's end with a word of prayer. Everyone, if you could please close your eyes, bow your heads. Heavenly Father, we thank you for um, this celebration, this memorial, this look back at a very somber moment in American history, and this look forward to um, the victories and the, the freedoms that have resulted uh, from uh, such a great tragedy. And on this occasion, we still remember those who fell that day, civilians, military personnel, police officers, firemen, and women. We still remember them, and we pray that you would comfort their families, especially tomorrow, as it is the 20th anniversary, where the pain is still deep and the scars are still visible for so many Please comfort those family members who will be remembering loved ones who fell that day. And once again, we pray your sovereign hand of protection over the firemen and women, the police officers that are among us, and the military personnel that are currently serving. Um, be with them and guide them and help them as they protect us. And Father, we pray for anyone here who has yet to trust in Christ as their Savior, may the most important message that comes from 911, 9-11-01, be that Jesus is our best friend because Jesus died to deliver us from sin and the consequences thereof. And I pray for anyone here who has yet to trust Christ as their Savior, that they would meditate on these words and in their hearts at this very moment believe in the one who was perfect, in the one who died for everyone, in the one who lives forever because he arose. And we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, we are dismissed. May God bless you all.